Hey guys, it's Coach Allie with Powerhouse Pageantry. Super excited to talk to you today. I know you're used to hearing Coach Megan's voice, but today you get me and I'm pumped. I'm going to talk to you about how to overcome not winning your state competition. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 107 of the Powerhouse Podcast. My name is Allie Mancuso. I am not Megan, but I'm actually her not-so-little sister. I'm a coach here at Powerhouse and now co-owner and COO of Operations, and I'm really excited about some of the new things we have coming down the pipeline at Powerhouse. But today, I am so excited to talk to you guys about how to overcome not winning and how to get a new dream. I really think this topic is so important for the season that we're in right now. I was talking to a lot of our ladies in our inner circle, and um, this topic is just so timely because a lot of people, specifically in the Miss America organization, just got done competing at state competitions. And as we all know, there can only be one winner, even though I like to say everyone's a winner for even getting on that stage. I know that's kind of a cliche thing to say, but it's so true. Anytime you're on that stage... You're getting out of your comfort zone. You're doing something that you love and you're challenging yourself, which is, which is so important. But there can only be one winner. So I think it's really important to talk about how to lose, how to overcome not winning. And with that comes getting some new vision for your life, setting new goals for your life and really getting a new dream. So today I really want to take more of an emotional approach. Um, and maybe some of the girls listening, this will help you kind of process those emotions Um, it's really important to identify what you're feeling after you compete. If you're not the one who comes out and wins the title, you put so much effort and energy into your preparation that it really can feel like a loss and something that you've been pouring so much into doesn't happen. It's like, what, what do I do when that happens? Well, I want to talk about it today, but first I kind of want to introduce myself a little bit more because I realize You guys are used to hearing Coach Megan's voice, and some of you might not know who I am. So my name is Allie Mancuso. Don't be confused by the last name. I am actually married, but I'm Megan's little sister. We were both uh, Miss Nebraska and the Miss America organization, and as a lot of you know, Megan this past year won Miss Nebraska USA, and so we were the first two sister title holders, not only simultaneously at the same time, but to have both Miss Nebraska USA and Miss Nebraska, which was really cool. I was Miss Nebraska 2019 into 2020 because I was part of the COVID class. Um, I, I also call us the guinea pig class for many reasons that I will get into here in a second. Um, but yeah, it, it was really fun doing that with my sister, and we had a lot of cool stories come out of that as well. But I, unlike Megan, did not win Miss Nebraska on my first time. So I really want to speak to the emotion that comes from, like I was saying earlier, not winning. You put all this effort and time and, and strategy and organization and and mental capacity into this goal. And this doesn't only apply to pageants, but what happens if it doesn't come true, doesn't come to pass? Do you have the strategies in your life to be able to process those emotions and talk to people effectively and not be a brat in the moment when something that you've been preparing for doesn't happen? I really want to talk to you guys about that. A little more about me. I I told you guys I was married. My husband's name is Joe. He's awesome. Um, Totally the love of my life. He's taller than me. For those of you who know, I'm 6'2". He's 6'5". Love him. We were both college athletes. He played baseball. I played basketball, though we didn't meet in college. And um, we live in Omaha, just where our powerhouse pageantry headquarters is as well. And he's a huge supporter of everything we do. I love him so much. I also, um, like I said, well, I was a basketball player in in college and I never really was into pageants. Um, I was always supporting Megan on her journey. She was Miss Nebraska 2014. And all that time I was in college playing basketball and I did like theater and music and stuff like that, but never pageants, mostly because I, I didn't know about it and I didn't think that I could do it. And I really wish somebody would have told me when I was, you know, a teenager that there was opportunities like this because I would have been all over it because it's so much fun. Obviously you guys know listening to this. But um, competing, when I decided to compete, it was a huge adjustment because I went from literally being the person who never wore makeup and wore sweatpants and a hoodie 
every day <laughs> and maybe changed outfits because we had two a days, um, but just changed into different sweatpants and hoodies, just to be honest. But I went from that to learning how to do my hair and makeup and learning how to have the X factor on stage and learning interview skills and how important all these things are. And now being a 26 year old and having, you know, executive experience and having my master's degree, it's really I, I can see how important those things are in the real world. Um, and that just goes to show what pageants can do for you. So I say that because it doesn't matter where you come from, what background you have. If you've been somebody who's grown up in the pageant world, being very little, watching Miss America, competed when you were little, or maybe this is your very first time doing something and um, a loss is still a loss and you can feel it in different ways. And I say that because if you have a goal and you've if you set something at the forefront of your mind and it doesn't come true, we all still need strategies, regardless if you have been in pageants for years and years or this was your very first time and maybe in either capacity you had the expectation, well, I'm going in to win. And if that doesn't happen, what what are you going to do from there? So if you're in our inner circle, this is something that we're talking about for our July topic. Um, and if you don't know what our inner circle is, feel free to DM either Megan or I on social media or Facebook message us and we can chat about that more. But it's essentially our group um, of title holders that really support each other and um, help answer questions about certain topics. And we have topics of the month, which is half of what we're talking about here on this podcast. Um but we talk about handling closed doors, changing directions, and really finding that new dream. And this kind of goes into our August topic, too, of having a total brand reset. So I'm excited to kind of dive in a little bit deeper for this podcast today. But yeah, so who am I? Who the heck is this person talking about uh, this topic? And and why does it kind of apply today? Well, like I said, I'm an athlete at heart. I'm really competitive. I joke with my husband that we can't play Catan because it'll ruin our marriage because I win all the time and he's competitive too. And, um, and that flows right into pageantry. It really does. Uh, but like I said, I was Miss Nebraska 2019. I tried Miss Nebraska for the first time in 2018 and ended up making top five, but did not walk away with the title. And if you know Megan's story, you know that in 2014, she won Miss Nebraska Uh, I think she was 20, don't quote me on that, but she was young and won on her first time. And so for me, coming from this basketball experience and basketball background, I was really competitive and I was prepping to win. I had no no other thing on my mind. Um, I was doing what all my, you know, local directors and people in my life told me to do. And I, I was having an only winning mindset. That's, that was the only thing on my mind. And, um, really there were a lot of expectations for me to win because my sister won on the first time and everyone was like, oh, Allie's going to come in and do the same thing because a lot of people who don't know Megan and I think we are the exact same person when we're opposites in a lot of ways. We're, we're similar, but we're very opposite brained and um, opposites in a lot of ways too. But that pressure really, I think reflecting back on it got to me because I didn't know how to process it and I really didn't even know how to identify it in some parts of the prep. Um, And so competing for the first time in any pageant, I really didn't know what I was doing. I was 23 at the time um, when I competed for the first time, and that's a little bit older um, of the division. Well, hopefully Miss America extends its age limit, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, I think it was a combination of me putting that pressure on myself because my whole life I've wanted to be like my sister and we are interested in a lot of the same things or we were growing up. And also I think the pressure did come inadvertently from other people. And maybe somebody listening can relate to that in some capacity. Maybe that's coming from your family or your directors, or maybe this was your last time competing or next year is going to be your last time competing before you age out. And that pressure is there. It's like, do you have the tools to be able to handle that? At the time I I didn't even know how to identify that and my own, let alone my own feelings or other people's feelings. Um, and just to give you some context around kind of the two years that I was, well, three years that I was part of the organization, um, during Miss Nebraska 2018, they announced the removal of swimsuit and that in itself was chaotic and it created a lot of stress. Um, and then this last year, the year or 2019, when I did win, they also announced that there would be changes in Miss America at Miss America and with the addition of pitch and all of that too. So it's been a crazy ride with, uh, the organization and my own experience. But that first time I competed, 
if any of you know the Enneagram, which Megan talks about a lot, I am a three. And so I naturally put a lot of pressure on myself um, to be perfect and to follow my plan. And it, th- when things go outside of my control or outside of my plan, I kind of freak out a little bit. And I, at the time, I didn't have strategies to be able to withstand that stress. I thought I did. And I mean, I wasn't terrible, but I wasn't I didn't have the awareness that I do now with that topic. And when competing, I wanted to prove that I could do it on my own. So I didn't ask for help early enough in my process. I I didn't. And I can totally admit that looking back on the process. I think we all like to think that we're perfect and that the way that we prepared was perfect. Um, But in reality, I think we can always ask for help and always ask for other people's opinions. Uh, But looking back, I really also listened to everybody else in my life in my prep. Um, at the same time, I didn't ask for help early enough, if that makes sense. So I guess I listened to people, um, in their recommendations because it was my first time competing in a pageant, but also I didn't ask for help when I need it, probably with the organization or stress management or emotions, if that makes sense, kind of a double-edged sword. Um, I also had to learn how to stand up for myself in the prep process and during the week because things happen and you it's literally impossible to control every factor that happens during competition week. Um, you can deal with difficult people, d- dealing with the things in the dressing room, etc. And it's just a lot. But despite all of that, the first time competing, like I said, I made top five. I won, I co-won interview with um the Miss Nebraska who won that year. I didn't win talent or evening gown prelim, but um, made top five and ended up getting second runner up. And that was a huge wake up call to me because I feel like all the pressure that was on me, I felt like I gut punched when I didn't win because that was my only goal. I didn't even see the value in making top five or the things that I've accomplished because the only thing that I could conceptualize was win or nothing, like 100% or zero. And anything in between was complete failure, which is not a good mental state to be in. And after the competition, everyone was trying to console me, but I was just keeping it together um, or trying to. And in my head, I was instantly analyzing what I could have done better, what I should have done and kicking myself for how I prepared. And I could have done X, Y, Z, P, D, Q better. And I say that now because maybe you can relate to that mindset after you're done competing. And let me be the first to say it's not a healthy place to let your mind go there. Um, There's a natural process where you're processing your emotions and reflecting on those things, but don't dwell on it for a long time because at the end of the day, you can't change the past and you can't change what's already been done. And if someone's opinion of you was what it was, like you're not going to change it. I actually tell my basketball girls that all the time (laughs) for uh, the girls that or any basketball player or athlete that tries to argue with a referee after they make a call. It's essentially the same thing. Once a ref makes a call, you can dispute it, but they're not going to overturn the call. Like once they've called a foul, they've called a foul. And so you throwing an attitude or a fit and cussing out the ref or whatever it is, it's just going to make you look bad. And the same thing relates to pageants. Yeah, okay, you didn't win. That was someone's opinion of you. And yeah, it's you swung and you missed. You missed the ball and or you didn't hit it. You didn't make the free throw at the end of the game. Sorry for my sports analogies. <laughs> that's just ingrained in me. But it, that's life. And you have to have the strategies to be able to walk through that, not dwell in the valley, but start hiking up the mountain again, because that's that's life. So let's talk emotionally about this mental state. So that story that I described was me personally, the first year that I competed. And again, make that story fit your own journey. So maybe this past year you didn't make top 10 and that was your dream. Maybe you didn't make top five or you got first runner up and you're, you had your heart set on winning the state competition, which I'm a firm believer that you should set the goal to win and, you know, set the highest goal possible because that challenges yourself in the process before then. And we can talk a little bit more about that later too, but you need to have the mental strategies to be able to come down from that if you don't meet it. So so you set this goal, you don't meet it. Are you feeling out of control? Are you feel like you let others down? Are you feeling like you missed your shot, your one and only shot? Are you feeling sad, angry, depressed, frustrated, confused? Yeah, probably a lot of those things, right? First of all, those are completely normal emotions. So if you're like me, some of you are, some of you aren't, which is totally fine. We're all different. 
But I am a type of person who doesn't know really how to process emotions well. And this is something, I will say, this is something that I've had to learn in my life. I wish I learned it earlier and I wish someone taught me this lesson earlier to how to pay attention to your emotions and and how to come down from, you know, the highs and lows of life. But it's okay to feel things. It's okay to be sad, angry, depressed, frustrated, confused. If things are naturally making you feel that way, that's something to pay attention to. But what you need to do is figure out the why behind the what. So does losing make you feel insecure? Does it make you feel like you're not enough when you don't meet a goal? Does it make you feel jealous? Does it make you feel bitter or spiteful? Again, are those feelings normal? Yeah, there, there's the, all the colors of human emotion are, you know, I could list all of them. And they're completely normal and healthy. But what's not healthy is staying in that mindset. So staying in the mindset of bitterness, of jealousy, of depression, of anger, of frustration. It's okay to feel it, but process through it and build yourself a system to get out of it on the other end. You can match the emotion with maturity and emotional intelligence to make sure you don't fall off the wagon in moments like this. Because a lot of times these moments are stressful. There's heightened emotions. You might say things, you know, you regret. And it takes, you know, that maturity and emotional intelligence to be able to say, okay, I'm kind of feeling out of control right now. I need to take a step back and rely on my systems and what I need to do to calm down, get my people around me that I need to process with in a healthy way. There's a difference between gossiping and venting, which we can get into. and We do a whole podcast on that. But there's a difference there and doing what you need to do to unwind from that. I want to tell you another story about kind of dealing with these emotions just from my own experience. But like I said, I was Miss Nebraska 2019. So I competed at Miss America 2020 at the Mohegan Sun, Connecticut for the first time where Camille Shire, who's our current Miss America, won. And the reason why I say our Miss America class was the guinea pig class is because in a lot of ways we had our expectations let down. And, you know, people tell you all the time, like Miss America, when you win a state title holder or when you win a state title, Miss America is not going to be everything that you imagined it's going to be because you see it on TV, you watched it growing up and there's these moments and you just expect it to be completely perfect in every aspect of you competing. But the reality is, It's run by human beings that are broken people. And that's not just Miss America. We're all broken people. So nothing is going to be perfect because we're all human beings, right? And hopefully that makes sense. But we, as a class, it was the most unique Miss America thus far um, in the aspect of we did pitch for the first time and we found out the details of pitch the day before we did it on stage. At least my group did. So I remember practicing with my roommate and a couple other girls with this like <laughs> microphone that she packed in her suitcase that kind of had the built in uh, like a karaoke mic type thing. Uh, we were practicing in our room and trying to help each other out. We're like, well, we have to do this on stage. It's the first time ever. And we're all freaking out and managing that stress. Um, and then also having evening gown taken away. That was a huge blow. That was one of my favorite things to do on stage and not getting able to not being able to do that on the Miss America stage was a uh, a blow to my expectations, to be honest, not getting to do the parade of states on the Miss America stage and not getting to do the um, show me your shoes parade, not being in Atlantic City, the birthplace of all of this and seeing the history there. Uh, just number of things over and over and over. So I say that because there's a lot of emotion there. And I think when you set your expectations on something, you have to be prepared for when those expectations aren't met. And that's really similar to when you set a goal and you don't meet the goal in the full perfect way that you had planned. And I think those expectations go right hand in hand with goal setting. So another story of this, let me explain the last kind of two years of my life. And maybe this can relate to you guys as well. Um, but I just gave up my title last month, which was an adjustment in my life for sure. But over the last two years, so I'm thinking back to July of 2019, um, I was working on my master's degree. 
Again, I'm 26. I was Miss Nebraska for two years in a very changing capacity <laughs> through COVID, through the new Miss America shift. Um, and I was prepping for Miss America, which in itself is a lot of st- is stressful. I experienced the new Miss America. Uh, I got engaged, planned to give up my title. Then COVID hit, which elongated my reign. I had to figure out my relationship details, my new wedding details, then dealing with COVID and juggling all of that. <laughs> All the while, I finished up my master's degree, planning a wedding for last September was my original one, then graduated from school. The week after, I started a high-level corporate job. Four weeks later, I had to plan a wedding last minute because everyone in my husband's family got COVID uh, the week prior to our wedding. So I had to plan an entirely different ceremony, location, guests, event, etc. cetera. Uh, all the while, coaching high school basketball through COVID, getting through the holidays without seeing most of my family because of COVID, preparing for my second wedding, which was the original party we had planned um, this past April. My fitness studio I was teaching at went out of business due to COVID. Then during this time, I was still prepping the local girls for the state competition when Miss America hadn't released all the info and kind of nobody knew what it was going to look like for this year. Um, My state executive director stepped down and the state organization was kind of in chaos for a little bit. All these things are like consecutive things that happened to me over the last two years. Um, Then I was working with the new director to put on, you know, a good show and for the Nebraska girls, trying to calm them down and helping them prepare and feel confident about the state competition. I bought a house. I moved into that house. I started a new job. Uh, I was packing for Miss Nebraska week, which for us was eight days long. Um, Kind of emotionally planning and preparing for that week, deciding or despite chaotic factors all around me, then making it through that week, crowning my successor, training her uh, with, you know, the Miss Nebraska binder and all those things, um, driving home and kind of re-getting into the new rhythm of life, <laughs> working now at Powerhouse Pageantry and learning how to be a wife, serving at church, and really just trying to figure out my next chapter of my life. So, all right, raise your hand if you can relate to that emotional chaos. <laughs> so that was like the last two years. And I know everybody has their version of that story. Maybe it's not all those specific details, but the last two years have been a lot for people, especially in America and MAO and MUO and all these pageant systems. Um, A lot of us didn't do anything for a year when competing or when our competitions got postponed. So it's interesting that, um, you know, we, we tried to plan for the strategy of, competing, but I feel like we didn't emotionally plan for it either. But I say all that because part of competing in pageants is knowing that you can't control every factor and there's a better chance that you're going to lose than you're going to take home the crown. That's just a fact. Even if there's three people competing, I mean, you're still a one in 3% chance that statistically that you're going to take home the crown. So what happens when your plan doesn't go according to your plan? That's oftentimes the way it is in life if you really think about it because you can only control what you can control. So don't stress out about what you can. I kind of said that earlier about um, not dwelling on the past because you can't change it, my basketball analogy, but it's so true. You can't change the past, so don't dwell on it because it will turn into bitterness and that will come out in an ugly way if you don't process those emotions. So because we all know pageant systems aren't always fair. Like I said, they're run by human beings and human beings are innately broken. None of us are perfect. If you're perfect, let me know. I'd like to hear all of your hidden strategies on how to be perfect in life. Uh, Cause we would like to think we are, but uh, every single person in any pageant organization is a normal human being. So we want to assume that everyone's trustworthy and honest and has integrity, but Sometimes there's a bag, bad egg in the bunch and you as a competitor can't do anything to control that, which sucks, but it's true. And sometimes there's unforeseen circumstances and biases that come up because, again, these patents are run by people and oftentimes volunteers who aren't getting paid to do what they do. They're just volunteering their time. So don't let it get to you before, during, or after because it's just not worth it, to be honest. Sometimes what we blame on bias was actually just our unpreparedness, or in reality, the class of women you were competing against was just as strong as you were. And from there, the judges might have just had a different opinion or went in a different direction, choosing her instead of you. And I know that's hard to hear, and that's not what we want. That's not our perfect goal or perfect outcome, but that could be the reality. 
is somebody could be more talented than you or or the judges just picked her because you have a talented class and we have to be okay with that and have the strategy to come out of that afterwards so let's talk about you did you prep the hardest you could and I'm going to get real with you for a moment with some of these questions but did you prep the hardest that you could how was your mindset during the week what type of person came out during your competition was it a sleeping bear that you didn't know was there and because of the stress you just became a different person that should identify some things for you how was your week after your competition did you never go to the gym did your dieting habits go out the window did you sleep in till 11 or 12 every day did you binge watch netflix what did that look like for you are you in a rut right now do you feel in a rut do you need someone to come in and you know kick your butt and set some goals or help you set some goals and and get on to the next thing yeah that's why goal setting is so important because it helps take you away from that place and pushes you towards the next step in your life. Because does losing suck? Yeah, it does. No one enjoys that feeling. But what helped me was trying to process why am I feeling emotional? Is it because I care? Is it because I'm insecure? Is it is or am I mad at myself for how I prepped before? Am I proud of myself because I know I I couldn't have done anything better in my prep and that was the best version of myself on stage? Maybe. Is it okay to be confused at the result? Yeah, but whatever the reason, if the outcome wasn't your perfect goal, yeah, there's still a little bit of that disappointment in there. That's totally normal. But I would challenge you that the girl who won too, you know, she probably had that similar goal that she's human just like you. She's talented and doing these hopefully for the right reasons. And the mature thing is to still support her after the fact, which is the hard thing to do and the hard choice to be mature about the situation and still speak life over her and the organization and just be the better person. So reflecting on your state pageant journey, I think there's three things that we can do to really incorporate like the feedback from state, your experience from state, and just reflecting on the whole journey. And the first one is stay in a mindset of humility and grace even though you didn't reach your goal. I think staying in that mindset is so important because you won't let that bitterness take root in your life. And maybe that comes from some affirmations or getting people around you that love you and can speak positively into your life. But really staying in that mindset of humility and grace will allow you to see things in a new way, see your journey in a new way, and respect the girl that won if that was not you. Secondly, people are always watching you, even though you don't think that they are. And my grandpa and my mom would always say this to me growing up um, because it's true and it helps give you a perception, not that you care what other people think, but if you're processing in a negative way that kind of turns you into a monster or whatever, that could skew someone's perception of you and, and maybe that's not the person you want to showcase to others. And it gives you a level of, you know, emotional awareness of, oh, okay, I need to process this privately or in my own home rather than around a community of people directly after the pageant. And three, lean on your values to really get you through and remind you of who you are. Because the overarching thing here and and best way to get through that emotional state and get out of the hill is to say, you know what, the outcome of this competition does not define who I am as a person. And the outcome of the goal does not define who I am. Win or lose, I'm still a winner. Win or lose, I'm I know who I am. I'm strong in my identity. I'm strong in my core values. And guess what? I have plan B, C, D, E, F past the pageant. The girls who have their identity solely in a pageant system, that's a dangerous place to be because those are the people who get shattered after they don't win or don't meet their goal in the perfect capacity. So pivoting from this, it's important to understand you down to your core and believing you are special and uniquely you despite the result that happens. Number two, begin to dream again. Think outside the box. Maybe use this as a challenging moment of like, okay, maybe I didn't do everything perfect, but this is an opportunity for some self-growth and some new goal setting and for me to think outside the box, be creative about what I want my future to be. And maybe this wasn't it, but man, there are so many new opportunities that I can explore in life. So three, get a vision for your future filled with beautiful new possibilities. There are a million things that you could do in life. And again, especially for those that aged out this year, 
gosh, I'm be glad that your identity is not in pageants. And there's also different systems as well. So if you age out of one, you could also explore doing another one. But <laughs> my point in this is that you are more than any title could ever give you. And four, really set those goals to put that vision into practice after you go through that creative process and find that new dream or find that new possibility that you have moving forward. So I have some affirmations for uh, everybody listening to this that hopefully help you emotionally process and really reminding yourself um, of who you are and give you some perspective. So here are some affirmations for you that you can either write down or read over to yourself. You are not the outcome of your goal. You are not your achievements. Your worth is not based upon other people. You are perfect regardless of what life throws at you. You can overcome anything you put your mind to. Your mindset is your choice. Your habits are your choice. Your willpower is your choice. Emotional intelligence can be learned. You have the power to control the support system around you. You can control what you let affect your life. You can control who has authority to speak into your life. You can control looking at social media and what you post. You can control where you seek affirmation from. There are tools out there to help you maintain balance and feel in control of your life. So if this goal didn't come to pass how you planned, maybe God has a better thing in mind for you. Everything go, everyone goes through hills and valleys, but it's up to you to keep hiking through them because you're enough just the way you are. If you're going through a season of confusion or you feel let down by a goal, don't let that stop you from moving forward into your life or raising the bar for what is to come for you. Because remember, your identity is not in the crown. It does not make or break who you are. It might seem like the end of the world, but looking back, you'll realize that that made you stronger. The whole circumstance did. And you'll be proud of yourself for how you responded emotionally to that small letdown because there's a victory on the other side. So I have to come to a close. I know I've been ranting for a little bit longer, but uh, I just want to remind you that if you aren't in our inner if you aren't in our inner circle, feel free to DM me or Megan and we'd be happy to chat with you about that. Our July topic is all about how to pivot and kind of elaborating a little bit more on what we talked about here on this podcast today. And we're doing a challenge right now in the inner circle around this topic to help casting vision and have that self-reflection. So another perk of that inner circle as well. A couple upcoming powerhouse podcasts we have. Episode 108 on August 3rd is going to be all about how to pivot. So really snapping out of the mental mess of criticism and setting your powerhouse goals for your future. Episode 109 is going to be on our upcoming mastermind, which we're super excited about. And 1010 is our total brand reset. So if you want to see a specific podcast topic, let us know. We want to speak to topics and issues that really pertain to you and your journey. So if you want if you want us to interview someone special on our podcast, and let us know that too. We're really open. We want to help support you and help you in whatever way possible. But that's all I have for you guys today. Again, this is Allie Mancuso, coach with Powerhouse Pageantry. Thanks for taking time out of your day to hear me rant a little bit and talk about this topic. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Hey guys, Coach Megan here, and thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. We're so honored to have you wherever you are, near or far away from the great metropolis of Omaha, Nebraska, where we are from. We are so proud to be your virtual coaches. If you could just share this with a friend that you feel like needs to hear this today, give us a five-star review if you haven't already, and click that link below in our show notes. We promise we are the nicest people. We are the nicest people, we promise, and we'd love to meet you, and we'd love to to figure out if you're a good fit for our programs or make a suggestion for a different coach, different consultant, different person that's a professional in their field that can help you. Um, the reason why we do it this way, actually, because a lot of people ask, is because we want to help you practice the elements of being a great title holder from the very beginning. And one of those things is vulnerability. One of those things is being a self-starter. One of those things is being able to reach out and cold email, cold call, cold DM somebody that you don't know because of the potential opportunity on the other side of things. When I was missing around, Nebraska and Miss Nebraska USA, just letting y'all know that's how you get media. That's how you get appearances. That's how you get sponsors is being willing to put yourself out there. And so 
so we want to help you practice that from the very beginning learn more about you and discover um, if we can help you and we'll point you in the right direction for one of our services programs and the right coach for you otherwise we will absolutely make a best suggestion for you in a different direction because at the end of the day we're not territorial about needing to coach every person in the world we just want you to find your right fit so that you can make your dreams come true and unlock the winner within you anyways just wanted to encourage you guys in that today again leave us a review dm us um, on instagram at any of our handles and with that we'll see you guys next week